Over the years, visual art and the Christian faith have had a conflictual relationship. Some believe that visual art can be a helpful tool in understanding biblical stories, but others see it as simply a waste of time and money. On the one hand, the church has been connected to some of the most timeless artistic endeavors in existence, such as Leonardo da Vinci's painting, The Last Supper. These works reflect real, meaningful collaborations between art and the Christian faith. However, to the same degree the church has appeared intricately linked to the arts, so too has it been weary of them. Iconoclasm has torn art and the Christian faith community apart on numerous occasions throughout history. In addition, many of the churches of the Reformation tended to seriously downplay the visual arts after branching off from Catholicism. As a result, many of today's Protestant leaders, though not explicitly opposed to the arts, fail to recognize them as essential to the Christian faith and to worship. In his book, Passing the Colors, Engaging Visual Culture in the 21st Century, Chris Stoffel Overvoort explains that he used to believe he was called to be an artist. Quote, I don't believe that anymore. I'm called to be a Christian. And the best way I know to be a Christian is to be an artist, end quote. He goes on to say, most artists feel inferior, but if you are a Christian, then you belong to the family of Christ. If you belong, then you are just as good as the next guy. We need each other. Artists can provide meaningful insights into life and religion, but artists need to learn about the church and the church needs to learn about artists, he says. I believe one of the reasons the visual arts have been pushed to the side is that many Christians value the verbal over the visual. Christians love to express their worship in the form of music, with the flashy lights, fog machines, and electric guitars. Most also enjoy listening to sermons, especially when the preacher tells stories and can make a personal connection. But when worship comes into play in the form of visual arts, this stirs up worries of idolatry, materialism, and distraction. Even with all these worries, I believe that visual art still has a meaningful place in the church today. There are many different reasons visual art should hold a place of significance in the church. One being that some concepts taught in church can be confusing and hard to grasp. Having visual representations of the ideas taught in theology can be useful for complete understanding. One method of doing this is through paintings and artworks that represent and illustrate scriptural happenings. These paintings bring history to life and make it easier to contextualize the events described by biblical stories. One example of this would include the Stations of the Cross, the 14 steps of Jesus' last day. The Stations of the Cross are represented in almost all Catholic churches all over the world. They are regarded as one of the most prevalent and influential pieces of visual art in the church today. First Station of the Cross, Jesus is condemned to death. The Sanhedrin, an exclusive council of elders, had Jesus arrested during Passover. After Jesus was beaten and tortured, Pilate ordered him to punishment by death by crucifixion. Second station, Jesus carries his cross. He has accepted his fate and is given a large wooden cross. He never complains and begins his journey up Golgotha. Third station, Jesus falls for the first time under the weight of his large wooden cross. Fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. They look into each other's eyes, both understanding the pain and heartache each other are experiencing. Fifth station, Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus to carry his cross. Sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. Eighth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. Ninth station, Jesus falls a third time. Tenth station, Jesus' clothes are taken away.
11th station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. Twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. Thirteenth station, the body of Jesus is taken down from the cross. Finally, the fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. Fortunately for the modern world, a number of theologians continue to insist on art's vital role in the life of the church. In their view, the doctrine of creation, as well as the limitations of predominantly auditory worship experiences, means the Christian faith community can no longer ignore the importance of artistic expression. Instead, modern scholars suggest church leaders need to engage the arts both critically and appreciatively, and to recognize the ways the visual arts can inform the life of faith and nourish the creative life of the church. As Jesse James DeCanto says in their article, Artists in Worship, art offers an open-ended way to engage the gospel. Another reason the church should embrace the facets of visual art is the fact that it is directly related to scripture and the creation of man. Many modern theologians pinpoint creation as a key source of support for the arts. Recall the beginning of Genesis, in which God creates, forms, and fashions the heavens and the earth. These passages emphasize God's craftsmanship and creativity. In doing so, the Genesis text reveals something as to the nature and character of God. He's an artist. For these reasons and many more, I believe that church leaders must begin to see artistic expression as essential to the church's identity, essential to the worshiping community, and essential to what it means to be people of God.